So I watched Midsummer. Midsummer. It was cool. I guess. y'all who don't know midsummer i i think i'm butchering the name it's a horror cult film that came out in 2019 and it got me thinking like what are like the most like scariest cults because mind you this this film shows like what happens in certain cults actually what's that noise in the reason why I'm sitting in the bathroom is because in the last video, I had to literally do audio editing and because it was just terrible, it was bad. But, you know, hey, we, we're learning, you know, from trial and error. We're we, we going to make it, though. Hopefully. I, I want to do a deeper dive into cults. So, I said, what are the scariest top 10 cults in the world? Like, what were the scariest top 10 cults? Man, I hate school, but why am I doing, like, research for a video? I don't know. But let's get this list started. For number 10, we got the Order of the Solar Temple. Yes, the Solar Temple. The Order of the Solar Temple, <clears throat> my bad, was a secretive cult founded in the 1980s. Um, it blended elements of Christianity with new age beliefs, you know, normal stuff, and occultism, <laughs> like like usual. It was led by Luke Jarrett and Joseph D. Membro. <laughs> Weird names. Um, they believed that an apocalypse was coming, and they were seeking salvage through death and rebirth. I don't know why people were doing that, but they were. Uh, the cult gained nor notoriety for ritualistic game ending, and um, people, uh, the cult people were uh, gaming themselves. Mind y'all, the reason why I'm saying game end or you know termination of life is because YouTube has a policy that you know could literally um, take this whole channel down if I just say something you know that you know you know. Thanks, YouTube. Thank you. This all happened in the 1990s, and the most infamous incident occurred in 1994 in Switzerland and Canada, where 53 cold people died in game endings, or the game in it themselves. Um, the cult believed in dying. It would be they would be transported to a higher plane of existence. You can't, you know what? I'm not going to say anything. These were the rituals that they had to leave behind uh, for people. It just, let, it just led to a bunch of dead bodies and people just sitting here thinking that that was the way of living. Uh, number nine is Um Shinrakyo. Um Shinrakyo. I, I, I think I'm butchering the name. Um, Shirakia was a Japanese doomsday cult founded in 1984 by Shoko Ashara. Ashara, I, I, oh lord. They had elements of Buddhism, Hinduism, and Christianity with apocalyptic beliefs. What is up with every cult having apocalyptic beliefs? Anyway, they claimed that Christ and they preached about the imminent apocalypse. Am um, Shinrikyo gained notoriety for its deadly sarin gas on the Tokyo subway in 1995, which killed 13 people, sadly, and injured thousands. The cult was also responsible for several attacks. Um, they, they, they had a very long history of violence and terrorism in 1994. Don't know why, but they were just out here being menaces to society. I don't know how you gain people in a cult by doing stuff like that, but they did it anyway. Um, they did various legal illegal activities, including manufacturing chemical weapons and stockpiling firearms. You know, just normal stuff that a normal cult does. This doesn't even sound like a cult anymore. This sounds like... Like a terrorist group, if if we being honest. Number eight, we have Heaven's Gate. Huh. 
Eight Gate. Get, never mind. Heaven's Gate was a cult found it in the 1970s by Marshall Applewhite and Bonnie Nettles, also known as Bo and Pete. The cult believed in a combination of Christian theology and UFO conspiracy. Hey, they, hey man, they were doing different stuff back then, man. Members believed that Earth was about to be recycled. Is this another, it's just another apocalyptic thing. It's just, oh my gosh. And they believe that spaceships would trail and a comet would transport them to a higher plane of existence. In March, 1997, 39 members, including Apple White, committed mass gamings on, on themselves, okay? In a mansion in San Diego, California. And the cult members believe that by shedding their physical bodies, they would be able to board the spaceship and ascend to a higher level of existence. Did that happen? I highly doubt it. You know, they probably did all that for no reason. They did this by ingesting a lethal cocktail of phenobar, baritol, and vodka. Crazy drink crazy drink and they induced themselves with purple claws and laid down to you know ascend to the afterlife um this shocked the world and raised concerns about the influence of cults and the dangers of groupthink i learned about that term in class the other day and it's crazy to see that they you know they actually use leadership skills to get people, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is actually interesting. For number seven, oh Lord, we got the Charles Manson family. The Manson family was a cult led by Charles Manson during the late 1960s. Manson was a charismatic and man manipulative figure to convince his followers that he was a the Messiah uh, with a apocalyptic visions. Hey. Can we just switch up like, like something? The cult was responsible for a series of gruesome gamings in Los Angeles in 1969, including the Tate LaBianca killings. Uh, actress Sharon Tate, who was eight months pregnant at the time, was among the victims of the Tate um, murders. Game and the murders were carried out by Manson's followers who eventually believed they were carrying out his orders to incite a race war. He called the Helter Skelter. And Manson and his followers were sentenced to to life imprisonment. And Manson himself died in prison in 2017. Yo, he lived for a long time. Yo. Let me do the math. 2017? Come on now. Dude, it, it had to be... Ooh, I haven't... Oh, man. I haven't done math in a while. Uh, it's 2024. Seven years. I need to go back. I need, I need to go back to elementary, uh do elementary math like that was that was sad Jeez. number six we got jonestown the jonestown cult was the formal name for people's temple agricultural pro project and it was a remote settlement established by the people's temple a cult led by jim jones and i'm not talking about dipset we fly high jim jones i'm talking about jim jones it was located in guyana South Africa it was founded in 1970s as a utopian com community. Jim Jones, the charismatic leader of the People's Temple, promised his followers a better life from racism and oppression. However, as Jones' control over his followers increased, the People's Temple became increasingly authoritarian and isolated. Concerns about the cult's practices, including allegations of abuse and brainwashing, led to increased scrutiny from the media and government. Um, 
it, it got bad. The eight, even agencies got involved. In 1978, U.S. Congressman Leo Ryan visited Jonestown to investigate reports of human rights abuses. During Ryan's visit, some Jonestown residents were not happy that he was there and expressed a desire to leave with him, but which angered Jim Jones and triggered a series of events leading to tragedy on November 18, 1978. While Ryan and his delegation were preparing to leave, members of the People's Temple ambushed him and killed them at the Port Kayatuma airstrip. Following the airstrip attack, Jim Jones could tell this was the end. He could tell that it was near. So he decided to have this Kool-Aid flavor drink that was poison that killed over 900 people, including children, known as the Jonestown Massacre. This made one of the largest single incidents of international civilian death in American history. The Jonestown tragedy shocked the world and just that's where the term don't drink the Kool-Aid came from. It's literally from this tragedy. It's a dark context. Just just saying that. It just what a dark context. I know Kool-Aid's that whole thing just went downhill after that, but you know, hey, you know, I, I still drink it from time uh, to time. Number five is the children of God. Um I I would go like more into detail, but on a serious note, like I looked up some of the stuff and it's literally terrible. I don't think I want to like go too deep into it. Let's just say it's a lot of, you know, it was a lot of sexual stuff going on because, and a lot of underage stuff going on. If y'all could, y'all know, put two and two together, but it's a lot of stuff like that that happened. So I'm not going to go too deep into that because YouTube will strike my video instantly. So we're not going to go into that, but just know it's very dark. Um, very like their beliefs were just all just messed up. So we're just going to go over that because I want this video to go up. So number four, we got the branch Davidians. The Branch Davidians were a religious sect originated from the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm Seventh Day Adventist. Oh gosh. They believe that David Koresh, born Vernon Wayne Howell, was the final prophet mentioned in the Bible's book of Revelations. David Koresh took control of of the Branch Davidians in the late 1980s after a power struggle within the group. The Branch Davidians compound known as Mount Camel, Carmel, I am so stupid, was located in Waco, Texas. The group's beliefs included an apocalyptic vision. Uh, here we go again with these apocalypse. I'm tired, I don't wanna hear no more apocalypse. Wait, the group were preparing for the end times. In February 1993, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives ATF raided the Branch Davidians compound to execute the search warrant related to illegal weapons possessions, and the raid led to a shootout resulting in the deaths of four ATF agents and six Branch Davidians. Hey, they were going crazy. In the standoff between the Branch Davidians and law enforcement, it lasted for 51 days during which negotiations were attempted, but ultimately failed. On April 19, 1993, the FBI launched a tear gas assault on the compound, which resulted in a fire that engulfed the building 76 Branch Davidians including David Koresh, died in the fire. How sad. And number three is Nixium. Oh, wow. Nixium was a self-help organization founded in 1998 by Keith Renier and Nancy Salzman. Wow. It marketed itself as a personal and professional, developmental, and 
offered courses on topics such as leadership, ethics, and personal growth. Oh, it sounds so sweet of them. This is nice of them. Too bad that, you know, they're, you know, they're a cult. <laughs> anyway, behind its facade of self-improvement, Nixium operated as a cult-like organization with Rainier as its charismatic leader. Members were required to, hold on, let me, let me go speak this up a little bit. They were required strict practices and dietary restriction and loyalty oaths. Nixium had a secret society within ranks called DOS, Dominus Abusquius and Sorium. That's a pyramid scheme involved manipulation and, you know, exploitation of um, female members. DOS branded with Rainier's initials and subjected to physical and psychological abuse. In 2017, investigative journalists exposed the inner workings of Nixium, leading to increased scrutiny and legal action against the organization. In 2019, Keith Rainier was convicted on multiple charges. Dummy, racketeering, and Trafficking. I'm not gonna say the other word. High profile members, including actress Alice and Matt, also face charges, legal consequences for their involvement in Nixium activities. The downfall of Nixium highlighted the dangers of charismatic leaders and the manipulation of tactics used by cult like organizations to exploit their followers. Crazy, right? Number two. We have the Process Church of the Final Judgment. The Process of the Church of the Final Judgment was a religious group founded in the 1960s by Robert Day Grimston and Mary Ann McLean. The cult blended elements of Christianity, Saint Satanism, and the cult of the focus of the concept of the judgment and the apocalypse. Here we go again with the apocalypse. This is crazy. They believe that the dualistic worldview of God having both positive and negative aspects represented by the figures of Christ and Satan church gained attention for its distinctive visual imagery, including the iconic logo featuring the faces of Christ and Satan. This is scary. Other than deities merged together, the cult attracted a diverse following artists, intellectuals, and counterculture figure, figures, <clears throat> and faced controversy of allegation and criminal activity. The Process Church was rumored to be connected to various crimes and conspiracy theories, although evidence linking to the group to legal activities remains largely speculative. Despite its relatively small size, the Process Church had a significant impact on popular culture, influencing music, art, and literature. Hmm, sounds like something I know. And Colt underwent a series of internal see <sighs> of the Process Church continues to fascinate and inspire curiosity with its beliefs and practices still discussed and debated by researchers and enthusiasts today. Man, and they're still doing this. So, hey. Last and not least, number one. Let's get a drum roll, okay? I did a lot of research and I, I, I was surprised that it was, it was this. But number one is the government. Oh, yep, I got, I got it. I, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thank y'all for coming to this video, video and clicking on it. I just wanted to do like a little deeper dive into cults and stuff like that. Um, check out my last video. Um, yeah, it was nice seeing y'all. Hit the like and subscribe button.